Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a non-standard equation. This equation is non-standard because we have an exponential function on the left-hand side and a rational function on the right-hand side. So we can't solve this problem by normal means. We have to use a non-standard approach. So here's what we're going to do first. We're going to try to guess a solution and then look for other solutions or prove that there are no other solutions. So that way we'll find all the solutions. Obviously, I'm looking for real solutions in this case. If there are any complex solutions, how can we find them? That's a question, something to think about. All right, great. So we have 2 to the power x equals x plus 1 over x. Now, there is a different variation of this problem which I want to tell you about. Uh, suppose you had, instead of x on the right-hand side, you had a different variable like y. We could go ahead and write this as 2 to the power x equals y plus 1 over y. And from here, we can kind of go about solving this problem. Or you could have a y on the left-hand side or x, that doesn't really matter. So in this case, we would have two variables, but there are certain requirements such as, you know, the solutions being integers or uh, having some type of restriction that allows you to solve this problem, even if there are uh, two or more variables. Anyways, we, we're not going to worry about this right now, but that's just a variation of this problem. I just wanted to talk about that real quick. Okay, so to solve this problem, I'm going to start by guessing the solution. And I'm pretty sure all of you have guessed it by this point. And that solution is x equals 1. Now, x equals 1 works because when you plug it in, you get 2 equals 2. Awesome. That's real cool, right? So now we have to show either there are no more solutions or if there are any other solutions, we kind of have to try to find them. And how do we go about solving these kinds of things? I, as I said earlier, we're going to be using a non-standard approach. So I'm going to take a look at these from a functional perspective. And at the end, I'm going to show you a graph of both of these functions. And then you'll get a better idea uh, what I'm talking about. Okay, great. So... Let's go ahead and take a look at the left-hand side, first of all, y equals 2 to the power x. As you should know, this is an exponential function, and since the base is greater than 1, this should be a function that is always increasing, and that is always positive. So the y values are always positive, and the y prime is always positive, which means y is always increasing. Great. So th that kind of gives us an idea. And another thing that you can look at uh, in terms of graphing a function is checking the x and y intercepts. Does this function have an x intercept? How can you find out? You can replace y with 0. And obviously, that's not going to give you any solutions because 2 to the power x cannot equal 0. So we don't get any, we don't get any x intercepts, uh, but can we get y intercepts? And the answer is yes, because if you replace x with 0, then you're going to get y equals 1. So 0, 1 is going to be a y-intercept for this function. Awesome. So that kind of gives us a little bit of idea about this function increasing, always positive, and it has a y-intercept. So with, the, with this type of information, you can roughly graph it. And if you want to make a table, obviously, uh, it's going to be even more accurate. Great, so let's go ahead and take a look at the function on the right hand side, which is the rational function. That is going to be a little more interesting because it has a rational piece. And obviously, you can write this as x squared plus 1 divided by x, which makes more sense from a rational function perspective because now we have a numerator and a denominator, so we have a single fraction. Awesome. And uh, what is the difference between these two things? Um, not really. I mean, they're not different because x cannot be 0 in either case, and everything else looks good to me. But the second version is much better because you can kind of set this equal to 0, and you're going to immediately uh, notice that uh, y can never be 0. It's impossible because x squared plus 1 equals 0 gives us uh, non-real complex solutions, and we don't want that, obviously. So it means there is no um, x-intercept. But there is no y-intercept either because x cannot equal 0 either. So we don't really have any intercepts, which means that when you graph it on the xy coordinate plane, our graph, obviously, it's not like that, but I'm just saying, uh, it's not going to touch the x or y-axis. So it's going to stay 
uh, away from the um, coordinate axes. Okay, great. But with this information, we're not ready to graph it because we're going to be looking at a couple other things, which is obviously the first derivative. So let's go ahead and differentiate this function and uh, see what we can get from here. Now, so you have two options here, either differentiate this or use the quotient rule. I'm going to use the first one since it's easier. The derivative of x is 1. The derivative, the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared because you can write this as x to the power of negative 1, move the negative 1 and reduce the power and you'll get that. Now set the derivative equal to 0. This gives you some critical points and here you get x squared equals 1 from here which means x is either 1 or negative 1. Now this is kind of interesting because we got two values but we have to be careful about one thing which is the domain and the range of this function. Okay. Since x cannot equal 0 for our particular function, we can kind of look at we can kind of look at two cases. Since x cannot equal 0, we can safely say, hey, what happens if x is positive and what happens if x is negative? Great. So if x is positive, obviously, y is going to be positive, right? This implies because positive plus positive. And if x is negative, y is going to be negative. So you know what that's supposed to mean? It means that your graph is going to be in this quadrant and in this quadrant. You're not going to use quadrant 2 and quadrant 4, unfortunately, because you're not. Great. So we got some information. How about some critical values? So if x equals 1, if x equals 1, then y is going to be 2. So 1 comma 2 is a critical point, but is that a maximum, minima, whatever? And for negative 1, you're going to get y equals negative 2. Awesome. So let's go ahead and make a table where we can put this all together and see how the function behaves. So we're going to have x, y prime, and y, which is f of x. The critical points are negative 1 and positive 1. But here's the thing. At 0, we have a dangerous zone at 0 because since x cannot be 0, x can be very close to 0. So we're going to talk about a little bit of limits here. But anyway, we don't have to go deep. Uh, but here's what I would like to know. The derivative is 1 minus 1 over x squared. Let me go ahead and write it down here. But I'm going to write it as x squared minus 1 over x squared. It's probably a little better in terms of making a table. So now, if x is greater than 1, like let's say x is equal to 2, test value, um, y prime is going to be positive. So I can safely say that it's going to be positive here. And obviously, at every root, it's going to change from positive to negative, as, uh, unless those are double roots, which is not in this case, right? And here it's going to um, stay as negative because zero is not a root, and then it is going to be positive again. So this means that our graph is going to increase and then decrease, and then it's going to decrease and then increase. But notice that there's going to be a gap. And actually what we have at zero, let me rewrite our function, the original one, we have actually a vertical asymptote vertical asymptote at x equals 0 because that's where the function is kind of approaching um, positive or negative infinity right so we have that kind of situation so uh, so we're gonna have in other words we're gonna have a maximum here and we're gonna have a minimum but those pieces are gonna be not connected uh, so you're going to see the following. Let me go ahead and show you what the graph looks like after all these things. Here's what the graph is going to look like. So you're going to have a minima here for the positive x values, a maximum for the negative uh, x and y values, and our graphs are going to intersect at only one point. Now let me tell you why. Remember our function, exponential y equals 2 to the power x, uh, is only going to take positive y values, and it's not going to appear in the negative area so there's no way it can intersect this and in the positive region it's only going to intersect the our rational function at one point because obviously uh, 2 to the power x is going to grow much faster than this function here. so this function kind of like as x approaches infinity this is going to be super small uh, this is going to look like y equals x which is the you know a linear function so obviously exponential is going to grow much much faster than the linear uh, looking function and uh, we're going to have a single intersection point which is going to be at 
1 comma 2 but since we were trying to solve for x x equals 1 is the only solution and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you tomorrow with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye